What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Ricky. I am the owner and creator here at Marley May Customs. Today we are recreating one of my old bestsellers from when I first started selling tumblers two years ago and it is the Honey Bee Tumbler. This one got a little bit of an upgrade. I think she looks super cute so definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you want to order one of these bee tumblers, you can find it on my Etsy, and that will be linked down below. I'm also on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You can search Marley May Customs, and you should be able to find me. And I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. So as always, we are starting out with a fully prepped and sanded cup. This one is another 20 ounce screw top from Craft Haven and I'm using the epoxy method to apply my glitter. So I am spreading just a thin layer of epoxy. You don't want to get too much, um, but just enough to coat the tumbler so your glitter has something to stick to. The glitter I am using for this cup is Beekeeper from Glitiful. I have used this for every bead tumbler I have done. It is honestly the perfect glitter for this cup. It has that nice golden honey color. And what I really love about it is that it has like these hexagon or octagon shapes in the glitter, which really adds to the effect of the honeycomb. As you can see here, I am rolling my cup in a sheet of wax paper, and this just really helps to lay that chunky glitter flat. This one is super chunky, so if you don't have a way to make it flat, you're going to have to do a lot of sanding. This wax paper trick really saves you a lot of time and extra steps of having to sand. After you let that epoxy dry underneath your glitter, I let this dry for about two to four hours because I did use fast set. Um, once that is dry, you are ready for your first layer of epoxy. I went in with 30 mils of artist resin from CCDIY. I let that spin and dry for about six hours, I would say. Um, my epoxy has been curing way slower than normal because this weather is crazy and it's still very cold uh, but after about six hours I went in with another 30 mils of CC DIY artist resin and I did a flood coat. I really like doing flood coats because it just is another step that you can do to save you from sanding and I hate sanding so anything I can do to minimize the amount of sanding I have to do I'm gonna do it. Flood coats are really great for that, whether you're using fine cuts or chunky cuts. Once your epoxy has a chance to cure after about 8 to 12 hours, you are ready to sand. And as you can see here, I didn't really have to do a lot of sanding. I really just focused on the top and bottom rims and then just did a light scuff of the rest of the cup and we were ready to move on to the decals. So I cut out a little honey drip SVG and some honeycomb SVGs. Um, this doesn't have to be in a certain color because we're gonna take this off anyway. It's just a part of the peekaboo process. And honestly, I have no idea where I got these files. I think I might've got them from Google, but I did a quick Etsy search and linked a couple of really similar ones down below. Um, you might even find one better you like. There's all kinds of stuff on Etsy, so I would definitely recommend purchasing over there. You know you're getting a high quality file that way and you won't have to do any cleanup in design space. I sized the two honeycombs um, together at 8.08 .08 width by 5.33 length. Um, and then I sized the honey drip to 9.15 width and 2.78 length. But as you can see here in a second, I did have to stretch this out. So I would maybe do uh, like 10 by three or 10 by 278. Just mess around with it until you get the proportions you want. Also, don't judge my cuts. I am still fighting with my Cricut blade. I just need to order a new one, but I haven't thought about ordering one yet. So yes, my final cut all the way through to the backing, but it doesn't really matter because I just cut these out into pieces anyway. And I just kind of randomly place them all over the cup, um, just in a pattern that you like it. It doesn't really have to be perfect.
For the honey drip, I just place this around the top of the cup and I like to make sure the top of the vinyl um, kind of folds over the top of the cup just so we don't have any weird spots where it doesn't go all the way around the top of the cup and you can still see the glitter at the top if you if, if that makes sense hopefully it does um, but this doesn't have to be perfect you can stretch this out and manipulate it you can see where I had to stretch it out a little bit where I didn't cut it long enough the biggest thing to keep in mind is to just make sure you don't have any air bubbles around the outside of the vinyl um, just make sure there's no bubbles otherwise your spray paint will get under there and it won't be a perfect clean peekaboo. After you place your decals, you are ready for spray paint. And I used Rust-Oleum two times um, satin. I believe the color is Summer Squash. I will say this color is pretty thin. Um, even in the warm weather, um, it's been pretty thin, but it is a really great color. So I had to take my time when I spray painted this. I did very short bursts. And I even went in and did a second layer after I got it all coated, just to make sure it was fully opaque. After you let your paint dry completely, you are ready to peel off the decals. This is a very tedious process. It takes a little bit of time, but the end result is so, so worth it. The only thing you really have to look out for here is to make sure you don't scratch your spray paint. So just try to use your little picker tool or whatever you use just on the vinyl and try to stay away from the cup if you can. If you can't, you can go back in with um, spray paint. You can spray a little bit in the lid of your spray paint can and touch it up with a paintbrush. It's not that big of a deal, but if you can't avoid it at all, it will just make your life so much easier. After you pull all the vinyl off, you can move right into the next step. I use Tim Holtz alcohol ink in Dijon, and then I put a little bit of alcohol in this needle nose uh, applicator bottle. And what you wanna do with this is to just drizzle your alcohol ink down the cup. It's gonna run, it's gonna look a little crazy, but there's really no rhyme or reason to this. I just drip it onto the cup, and then after I get most of the cup covered with alcohol ink in like every section, I'll go in with the alcohol. This helps to run the colors and make them bleed and make them blend together to give you a really cool effect. So I spent about 20, 30 minutes maybe dropping inks and dropping alcohol um, until I got an effect I really liked. And this is what I ended up with when I decided that I was happy with it and I was ready to walk away and let it dry for the next step. You're gonna wanna make sure your alcohol inks dry for about an hour. I let this sit overnight and then I epoxied the next morning. For this layer of epoxy, I went in with 30 mils of Fast Set because I was really excited to get these little bees that we're gonna put on here in a few minutes. I was just really anxious to get those on. So I wanted to do Fast Set so I could get it done a little bit faster. And I just mixed a tiny bit of Bright from Peachy Olive Glitters into my epoxy. I wanted to give this a nice glittery top coat, but not too glittery. In the previous bee tumblers I've done, I didn't do this, but I love how it turned out. Like I said, she got an upgrade and I think she looks really cute. After I let that coat of Fast Set dry, after about four hours, I went in with the little bee rhinestone applique things, <laughs> and I attached those with UV resin and cured them under my little nail lamp. 
I normally use the UV resin from CC DIY. I am completely out, so I just use this brand from Amazon. I really don't recommend it. It stays tacky unless you cure it forever, but since we will be epoxying over these bees, I figured it wouldn't really make that much of a difference. I highly recommend the CC DIY UV resin if you are in the market for a UV resin though. Since we put the bees on with the UV resin, we didn't have to wait for them to cure for very long, just underneath the nail lamp. So I just went in straight with my final layers of epoxy. I used 30 mils of CC DIY Artist Resin and I let that cure for about eight to 12 hours. I came back and looked to see if I needed another coat, which I didn't. So that portion of the tumbler is complete. Now we are ready to move into our rhinestone lid. So for the lid, you're gonna wanna prep and sand the same way you do with tumblers, especially since we're gonna be putting rhinestones on this, you wanna make sure that it is sanded and prepped really well. After that, you're gonna wanna tape off that black section of your lid just to try to prevent any paint from getting on it. If it does, it's not a huge deal. You can clean it off with alcohol and a Q-tip. Once you tape it off, you are ready to paint, and I use the color Pale Daffodil from Apple Barrel, and I use this CC DIY paintbrush. I freaking love this thing. It is so nice. It applies color really smoothly and really easily. I do like to use it a little bit damp, but if you have issues with streaking paint, I really, really like this one. Once the paint on your lid dries, you are ready for your rhinestones. I use the Liquid Fusion glue. You can get it on Amazon. I will have that linked down in the description box below. I do not apply my glue in a very clean manner. Um, I tried using the needle nose bottles, but my glue just wouldn't come out. It's very thick. So I use the end of a rhinestone applicator tool and just use that to spread it onto my cup or my lid, whatever I'm doing. And it's messy, but it works. So I don't really recommend this method, but it does work. <laughs> the rhinestones I'm using, I think are just called yellow AB. If they're not, I will have it up on the screen. I got these from Peaches Crystals, but honestly, you can find this from probably any rhinestone supplier. I really like looking on Etsy. Um, Amazon has some as well. When you start applying the rhinestones, I really recommend starting on the side of the lid right here. Um, it's just gonna help give you a nice base and you're not gonna have to squeeze anything in. When I apply this first row, I like to place them just slightly above the top rim. You'll see me push them into place. I don't like them hanging over too much, but just enough so that you can fit that second line of rhinestones underneath because we are using um, SS20 or five millimeter rhinestones for this entire lid. On this rim right here, you will have to space your rhinestones out just a little bit so they all fit because when you get to the very end, like the very last stone, you can't fit another SS20 in there. So you just wanna space them out just a tiny bit and you really can't tell when everything is done. I like to let that first line of rhinestones sit and fully dry before I move on to the next one. That way I don't nudge them or push them out of place with the rhinestones underneath. When you start putting the rhinestones underneath, you're going to place them in between the two stones on the top like you would for a honeycomb pattern and you'll just do that all the way around that rim right there. Once you get all those rhinestones placed, you are ready to move into the top of the lid. So for this first line right here, I like to push these stones so they are touching that first line of stones on the outer rim. Hopefully that makes sense. I tried to show you a little bit of what I was doing, but when you push these all the way out so they touch those other stones, it's really gonna help you 
fill in as much space as you can. There's not a lot of space on this lid, but that does help to cover up some of the paint. And you are just gonna go around just like we did on the lid and place all those stones as close together as you possibly can. Once you get to the second line, you're gonna do the same thing that we did on the rim and place those rhinestones in between the two rhinestones above them like a honeycomb pattern. Um, once you start putting these all together, it's not gonna line up 100% perfectly. That's okay, you're not gonna be able to tell when it's all done. Just do the best you can to make sure each rhinestone is as close to the one before it, as close as you possibly can. Once you get to this third line is where you're on that kind of lip where it falls off into the in, inner portion of the lid. Hopefully I'm explaining that right. Um, but you're on this lip, so this line is a little bit tricky, but it's not bad. You're gonna wanna place these kind of on that angle, and it may seem like they're not gonna stick down, but just move them, um, nudge them around until they sit flat, and same thing, you're gonna do like the honeycomb pattern and place those in the middle of the rhinestones above them. Once you get to this inner portion of the lid, it's really easy and smooth sailing, and it didn't take me long to do this inner portion at all, maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, same thing, do the honeycomb pattern. It's really, really simple. You will see a couple of stones that look a little bit misplaced, but same as before, just push them into place as best you can and just make sure they're all as close as possible. And when it's finally done, you're not gonna see any of the little screw ups or mess ups. It's just gonna look really flawless and really beautiful. So here is the final look at this honeybee tumbler. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of this cup. I will have all the links for all the products I used in the description box. I will also have all the links to my Etsy shop, my social media, my website, everything like that. Any extra information you might wanna know will be in that description box. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video. It really helps me out so much. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss another upload. The goal is right now to have a new video out to you guys every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.